Hi everybody, it's Wednesday. We're back on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to break down today's market action. And Jim, we are down broadly once again after yesterday's declines. What yeah, do you think? Look, I follow the uh, proprietary oscillator that I've been watching since 1986, which is the S&P 500's proprietary oscillator. And one of the things that got me down was when it came out, it was flat last night. When we caught a bottom at the beginning of uh, this month, it was minus five, minus six. So what I think we're doing is getting getting oversold, but we're not there yet. All, all that said, uh, a lot of the companies uh, have managements that have been listening to the conference calls and know the buzzwords. Boeing knew, for instance, don't say anything other than positives about cash flow because its competitor, Lockheed Martin, kept cash flow guidance the same. Unfortunately, all stories aren't equal. For instance, I thought Twitter was good, but you know what, people said, you know, the uh, domestic is flat. Uh, I was looking for General Dynamics to have a very good number, but they did not have nearly good number as Textron. So there are companies that just didn't deliver numbers, and there are companies that haven't been able to tell stories, and those are very different. Uh, I wish that a company like Costco, which boosted its dividend rather remarkably, 50 to 57 cents, would have said, and we're doing this because it's halcyon times, but they were uh, close-lipped. Now, we know CAT had some storytelling issues, but you thought the Texas Instruments conference call was joyous. Yeah, so let's compare those. Caterpillar with the high watermark of uh, first quarter. There's really no way you can buy it. Uh, by the way, uh, this is, I will be talking about 3M in our uh, special program for, just for Action Alerts people. Uh, but, you know, when I look at what was going on in the Texas Instruments call, there was a considerable short base buildup thinking that they had to say negative things because they've got some business with some major cell phone companies. But Texas Instruments has repositioned itself into a company that's really much more involved with industrial and auto. And those were both very strong. A lot of people felt, well, if autos are peak, then Texas Instruments has to be bad. But Texas Instruments is about having uh, the percentage of a car how much they have in it. It's a good quarter. Yeah, they returned $5.1 billion to shareholders. They really love uh, to return capital. They generate a lot of cash. And meanwhile, Jim, I want to highlight your real money column this morning. 12 reasons to be cautious. Inflation, one of them. Yeah, look, it is uh, ultimately gut-wrenching to uh, listen to the conference calls and hear about freight. Here, we know that aluminum's up, copper's up, steel's up lumbers up. These are undeniable. And of course, the big daddy oil is up. So when you put all those together, what it says is stagflation. Now, my colleague Doug Cass, who's a much must read, has been talking about this. Stagflation is your worst combination. So again, one of the reasons why I've been cautious is because of a scenario we have where if world growth is slowing because of a trade war uh, and prices are increasing, Norfolk Southern putting up a good number, but that's at the expense of the, of the customer, it creates a, a, uh, a reason to sell. And that's what people are looking for, are reasons to sell, because they have become, uh, we were complacent for a while. There's no complacency now. And it speaks to why you've been raising cash for Action Alerts Plus. Yeah, you know, we've been probably four to one cash uh, raised to, uh, to buy, and we have communicated that caution to those of you who subscribe and are parts of the club. You know um, that I've been very, very concerned, and I'm not backing away, and that's why the real money piece might help you. Meanwhile, Jim, last night on Mad Money, you had the CEO of Six Flags. He talked about the barriers to entry in that business. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've liked Six Flags as, as an income producer. Now, at all times on Mad Money, I'm incredibly cognizant that we have a lot of people who are trying to cobble together more income. And I have seen, now there was an iteration of Six Flags that went bankrupt, so that's always in people's minds. But Six Flags, uh, Jim Reed Anderson has done a remarkable job running it. And that 5% uh, yield is going to go higher and not because the stock is going to go down. Yeah, they've been raising that dividend for, what, eight years? Yeah, it's really been very steady. And is that a nice spread between that and the 10 years? Is that a big difference? Well, I mean, I think that when it comes to trying to have income, uh, you also want to have the coupon, so to speak, go up. And uh, that's the case. Remember, they don't offer you more and more yield on treasuries unless your bond price goes down. True. Okay, Jim, who do you have coming up on MAD tonight? Well, tonight I got my buddy Scott Wapner, and I want to talk for a second about his book, When Wolves Bite. 
Uh, it started with a very uh, spirited interchange uh, between Carl Icahn and I saw last night at Scott's Excellent Book Party and Bill Ackman. But this is really a story, uh, and one of the reasons I like it from what I do for uh, Street and for Mad Money, is that there's a stock involved, Herbalife. And what happened with Herbalife had very little to do with Herbalife. It had to do with egos. And the egos really determined the stock price. And one ego won and the other lost. I'll leave it to you to figure out which one. Okay, we'll be watching tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on CNBC. Jim and I are going to continue talking about stocks. Please join us on ActionAlertsPlus.com.